This is from the Bank of Ghana's own report. Now, at the start of the year, external debt was bigger than domestic debt. That's about 32.3% of GDP for foreign debt as against 30.2% for domestic debt. By the end of the November 2020, the month of November 2020, this had reversed with foreign debt increasing a bit more than the domestic debt, as the 36.2, as again 38.2. Here's what you should be concerned about, because the, according to the Bank of Ghana, as at the end of November last year, the public debt to GDP ratio had risen to 74.4%. The total debt that you and I owe, 286.9 billion Ghana cities. This is suggesting that the full year ratio may be close to the 76% that Fitch and others talked about. I've been joined in the studio by Her Excellency Ambassador Diana Concia, who is the EU ambassador to Ghana. Madam, good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. When you hear such figures, how do you react to them? As someone who obviously, I know the EU has been doing a lot with, with government trying to manage our debt portfolio. How do you react to this? Well, figures uh, around 70, 76% you said of, uh, of uh, public debt are indeed high for a country of the level of development of Ghana. Uh, for us in develop, developed countries, uh, as, as they call them, of course, it is not a scandal. I'm coming personally from a country that has uh, passed the 100% level of debt a long time ago and, uh, and we live with it. The problem is uh, how the markets perceive uh, Ghana's debt. So while it's true that uh, already a few years ago, I remember the IMF uh, was saying Ghana is close to the level of debt distress. On the other hand, uh, the investors have been running to buy the uh, euro bonds uh, from Ghana. And I understand that the government wants to issue new euro bonds. Uh, also, I, I know that the foreign debt of Ghana, um, a lot of it is with multilaterals. Uh, it has uh, relatively long uh, maturities. So it is worrisome and it is not worrisome. I do not feel qualified to, to give uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an informed and professional opinion on, on this issue. But I want to say it is not so simple. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it, and you, you, you talk about the, it's, it's not really alarming for the lack of better expression. The concern is a lot more about what the, the, the money is used for and the investments that we're making because a lot of the money is going into consumption, which has raised a lot of concern. So we don't have productive mm -hmm. borrowing, as in putting the money into certain areas of investment. I think that obviously should be of concern to, to you, uh, the EU, looking in. Well, Alfred, you, you nailed it. Uh, the problem is that uh, a lot of the government expenditure goes to pay interest, uh, to pay salary, and not much of it is uh, free for productive investment. Now, we, the European Union, we, don't, we are not a lender uh, as an institution. It's our, our member states that have... Uh, there are creditors of, of Ghana. So this is not something that I can say that as European Union worries me for particular reasons. We don't lend. Mm -hmm. When we do cooperation with the government, we give grants. On the other hand, when we do when we give budget support to the government, even if it's a grant, like what we gave last year, last year we gave uh, uh, 86.5 million euro to help the government to fight against the consequences of the pandemic. We do look that the public finance management is, is solid and responds to certain criteria. And Ghana until now has always passed this test on our side. Mm -hmm. Then again, the way that the creditors see Ghana, this may be different, but well, as you said, the, the, the part that maybe is worrisome is that the government has a lot of very ambitious development programs, but there aren't enough resources to mm -hmm. Uh, to, to implement this program. So how we find the resources for the development of Ghana, that's the question that, uh, that everybody has to ask. Mm. And I know that the government is, is trying to look for the resources. We, as, uh, as foreign partners, can certainly also help. 
but the, the most of the effort has to come from the government and particularly from the side of, uh, of increasing the, um, the revenues, of increasing the fiscal revenues. Mm. I know you've been working with the Ghana Revenue Authority in many areas on this um, over the period, but when, when the member states of the EU, for instance, gives Ghana grants or, or as to where we're going for loans, is there a process that you follow through to ensure that these monies are used for its intended purpose? I can talk about the process uh, that we have for the European Union. Mm. Um, when in the past uh, we have given budget support to Ghana, mm. uh, normally the budget support came with some indicators associated to it. So um, we are not looking exactly what they do with the money. The money is given to the Treasury of Ghana and is, uh, is fungible. They, they, they do whatever they want with it. We look though that certain indicators are reached. For example, we had uh, uh, one of these budget support in the past years that was looking at business environment indicators. Mm. So, I don't know, shortening the time between uh, um, for, for imports and export transaction, export processing and the customs, uh, uh, improving labor conditions by sending more labor inspectors to uh, companies, these kind of mm. indicators. Sometimes they were uh, reached, sometimes they weren't. And there was a part of the money that was linked to the indicators, so it wasn't disbursed if the indicators were not reached. Uh, and then again, there is always a requirement uh, that the public finance management has to be reliable. And that again, over the years, at least since I have been in Ghana in 2018, this has always been found satisfactory. But uh, our um, programs are different from uh, the loans that mm -hmm. uh, uh, either a sovereign or a bank can give to the government. The mm -hmm. criteria are completely different. This is our procedure and it's for grants. It's a very important, interesting point you make there. So with the budgetary support you give to Ghana, there are indicators you look out for which Ghana has to achieve. And at every level of the achievement, the, 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 a different tranche of the money is released. Mm -hmm. So in certain areas where we don't meet those indicators, you don't release those budgetary allocations mm -hmm. or budgetary support yes. for, for, for Ghana until such a time when we actually take the box and meet those indicators. Those budgetary supports or that money doesn't come in. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting that you, you, you make the point there because then it's incumbent now on government mm -hmm. to improve the standard structures and the processes to meet those indicators. Yeah. But let me say that at the moment we have no such operation ongoing because uh, uh, all the money that we had available for uh, cooperation with Ghana was spent last year for this uh, emergency budget support uh, that we did to uh, help the government fight against uh, COVID. And that budget supported no indicators. So mm -hmm. we looked at the um, macroeconomic macro management. Uh, we said, this is OK. And then we released the money, and that's it. So there are no indicators. Uh, there is nothing. This for, has been, for, for has been paid. This is specific for the COVID yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very special operation that we did with the support of all the member states of the European Union and uh, in the framework of the EU global response against COVID. Mm. So at, at the moment, at the present moment, we do not have such operations, and we are looking at what we are going to do with Ghana. Uh, in the coming years, uh, and I cannot tell yet um, which kind of, uh, of programs we are going to implement. I can tell you that we are looking at certain areas, but uh, I don't know exactly the modalities. We are still in the thinking phase. 